Hi viewers, this video is mainly aimed at those who are new to the precious metal gold and how the media kind of portray gold coins as, you know, something this size, uh, the Mexican 50 pesos. You know, you've only got to look at any kind of film on the TV, uh, you know, the westerns, they've got bags full of gold coins this size or the, the Italian job with huge great gold bars. It's always portrayed as something large and um, in reality you know due to the value of gold it's uh, it's a lot smaller generally and um, you know I thought I'd get a video out covering that exact subject for example these little tiny Swiss Helvetia coins well, I say they're tiny they're not that tiny um, the 20 francs from various years. Each of these contain 0.186 troy ounces, which is uh, converts to 5.8 grams of gold. Now, I'm going to do this uh, in British pounds, and there's a good reason for that, which I'll come to later. Um, anyway, the price per gram today of gold is uh, 24 karat gold is uh, about 48 pounds a gram um, now this obviously weighs more because it's not pure gold but it should weigh 6.45 yeah and it contains 5.8 grams of gold so let's have a look on the calculator and do 5.8 grams of gold times the current market price which is about 48 and so that one little coin is worth 278 pounds melt price today obviously there will be a premium so this tiny little piece, 278 pounds, um, and it, it soon builds up. Um, anyway, let's move on to the, I dug out some half sovereigns to include in this video, various different ones. And um, since there's the one, there was a comment about half sovereigns the other day, so uh, what year is this? 190 something or other. Uh, the little half sovereign. Uh, that's Edward the Seventh, yeah. So the little half sovereign is um, 0.11 of a troy ounce, so it's just over a tenth of an ounce. So obviously, ten of them would make uh, just over a troy ounce. Now it contains 3.65 grams of gold. So let's have a look at the half sovereign, which should weigh 3.99, well 3.98 is just a tad under, probably due to wear. Um, so uh, if it contains 3.65 grams of gold, we've got 3.65 times the current spot price or scrap price which is 48 pounds 175 pounds just for the little half sovereign now I can remember buying these for 90 pound or, or less I think <laughs> some of them but yes 175 pound today for a little half sovereign Anyway, let's have a look at some of the other half sovereigns while I'm on it. Um, you saw Edward the Seventh there. Well, this is uh, Queen Victoria Young Head or Bun Head, and this is the uh, Shield Back half sovereign. There's also another Shield Back there, which is the Victoria Jubilee Head or Jubilee Bust. Um, here's an, an unusual one more unusual this is actually an Isle of Man half sovereign 
and that's uh, obviously our late Queen Elizabeth. What else did I have there? George, George V, Edward the Seventh. There's a nicer grade, Edward the Seventh. There, I think, if I remember rightly, because the first thing to go is his uh, hair. And then a couple more unusual ones. I've got a feeling this 2015 is a really low mintage. I'll have to double check, but I'm pretty sure that this one's pretty scarce. And then the 2005, was it? Yep, yeah, with a change in design, as I have done this year. Anyway, some of the... Um, gold that I've picked up over the years for example like this um, let's have a proper look at this got this from my LCS in about 2015 I think I can't remember exactly but back in 2015 gold was just 750 pound an ounce which back then 750 pounds an ounce sounded a lot of money <laughs> so I didn't buy too much but uh, I wish I had bought more, but there you go. Um, 1885 Half Eagle or Coronet, $5, whatever you like to call it. And they can, they're 90% gold, which I'm sure you know. And they contain 7.53 grams of gold. So the little $5. And if we work on the... If we work on the basis of 7.5 grams, 7.5 times 48 pound, so 360, the melt price on that, but you would probably get a bit more because of it being collectible. And the, again, this one I bought oh, several years ago now, I can't remember exactly when, but uh, I don't think it was melt, uh, it was over that. Anyway, the point I'm trying to get to is the reality of gold is that it isn't always great big coins like this because the majority of people can't afford great big pieces of gold like that um, because they are so expensive. Um, this little one which I did get at Melt French which is just under a tenth as you can see the average gold weight 0 0.9 um, the little French 10 francs there is far more affordable um, can't remember how many grams that is but I want to move on to other forms of gold so you can see just how much gold is actually worth and I'll start off with this um, ring which uh, you won't be able to see the hallmarks probably even with my loop let's have a look see if we can see it no but I've looked at it and it's uh, 22 carat so if we uh, have a look at 22 carat let's see how much it weighs it weighs 4.27 grams now 22 carat today is 43.74 so we'll round it down to 43 and that's 4.27 4.27 times 43 so that little gold ring 183.61 now uh, because it's a perfect ring, no, nobody would actually, well, not in their right mind, they wouldn't send that to scrap because it's a saleable piece of jewellery and 22 carat is particularly hard to find here in the UK, so that would fetch way over that. Anyway, a tiny little detector find, little letter A, this is in 9 carat gold, weighs 1.73 grams and... 9 carat today is 17.89. We call it we call it 17. Uh, so it weighs 
71 grams times uh, 1789, well, uh, let's call it 18. And you can see just that tiny, the scrap value of that tiny little thing is 30 pound, over 30 pound. Um, let's move on to um, necklaces. Now, this one's perfect, but if you have one that's broken, then all you're really going to get for it is the scrap value. Um, so let's see what this little chain weighs. 4.72 grams. And it's 9 carat. So 4.72 uh, times 18 pound a gram. 84.96. So if that was broken and not usable, you know, you would still get 85 quid for it. Tiny, you know, tiny amount of gold, really. Uh, and I'm sure many of you have got necklaces or rings or earrings shoved in your jewellery box. Um, this one is also 9 carat and has a sovereign holder. So, to, so they're both 9 carat. I did look with the loop. And you've got 5.81 grams of 9 carat. So let's do 5.81 times 18 pound approximately. So it's a hundred pound scrap value just for that um, chain. Obviously there's nothing wrong with this one. So there would be, um, you know, if you wanted to sell it, it would, it, you would fetch more um, because it's a saleable piece, not just a scrap piece. Right, I'll have a quick slurp and I'll be right back. Right, just out of curiosity, I'm going to have a look to see what the uh, scrap value is on the 50 pesos today. So you can clearly see it's got 37.5 grams of uh, oro puro, which is pure gold. So 37.5 grams. Let's put that in the calculator. So you've got 37.5 and melt price today on 24 carat is about 48 pound. So did I do times 48 equals, so 1800 pounds, which, uh, you know, you can see why <laughs> um, people uh, don't have stacks of these because, you know, affording uh, you know, a piece like that is um, is quite hard work. <laughs> you'd, you know, you've either got to be pretty wealthy or you've got to be a very strict saver to save up for a piece like that. But I mean, you can um, obviously buy pieces like this as you go; they're more affordable, and ultimately you could um, trade them in for bigger point, um, bigger pieces if you want to. Um, I'm not really a massive fan. Of holding larger pieces because you do have a limited market when it comes to reselling whereas uh, sovereigns half sovereigns um, quarter ounce easy to sell and obviously and obviously the one tenth coins like this one tenth Britannia they are highly liquid and uh, obviously do command a much bigger premium um, and along with the little one-tenth Isle of Man Angel, which many may have not seen. I think it says one angel on there. Yeah, so they are, you know, the smaller you go, the more affordable it is. And obviously, if you get stuff like that for free, like I did, um, £30 for just uh, swinging the coil. And obviously you can do the same with chains and then it doesn't matter if they're broken because if you're just selling them for scrap you get the scrap value. But anyway, that was the point of the video, trying to explain, you know, how the media portrays gold to be these great big coins or great big bars. But in the reality is very few of us can afford those things. And uh, there are, you know, easier ways to be buying gold and these are extremely liquid um, as we as like I said earlier you know as with many of the uh, fractional pieces all uh, very liquid 
along with jewellery if it's if it's broken I recommend that uh, if it's not broken then you don't sell it uh, to one of these we buy gold companies because they will sell it on as a piece and have you know they won't they won't melt it they'll sell it on to other dealers who will sell it on as jewellery with a huge premium attached so uh, you know if you've got jewellery that isn't broken then I would definitely uh, recommend trying to sell it peer-to-peer. -peer. There's loads of places now that uh, people can sell items. Anyway, hope you found the uh, video informative and uh, catch you all on the next one. Bye.